Welcome to Video Church. Today we're looking at a verse you're well aware of, I hope. You can look it up on the internet or in your Bible or in your thesaurus or in your Google and find that passage and read it for yourself because after all you should do some of your own homework. That is, the scripture that we're talking about is he would take away the stony heart and give us a heart of flesh. Now, I like that because my last name is Stone, so a lot of people think and make jokes of being either stoned or being tough as stone or making reference to a lot of different issues that stone is. I think of the chief cornerstone. I think of other issues that are related to stone, but a heart of stone is an interesting thing because... I get stones, kidney stones, often, and those are powerfully, miserably painful in my life. But you see, there's something else that's also just as painful to God more than your suffering with a kidney stone, and that is having a heart of stone. Having your heart gradually metastasize into not cancer, but into going from what started off as a tender heart when you were close to Jesus to now becoming a heart of stone dealing with those issues you have at work or those issues you've gone through in your life like with divorces. A divorce in your life will cause you to have scar tissue. Your scar tissue will continue to grow and it'll be this calloused, hardcore over covering of your heart that'll make it harder for you to be tender towards someone else. So divorce is hated by God because of what it causes in your life. It causes you to be less than tender as your first love would have been. So when you go through divorce, you have to have a excision, so to speak. You have to excise that scar tissue so that you can become tender towards the one that you love now that you didn't love then. God takes away our stony heart. We're not able to do that. He does that through a process of, not evangelism, but a process of sanctification that I hate to use that word because people get so carried away with religious tones that they don't understand what's going on. It's not a process you do or that you act on the outside to cause it to change on the inside, but it's choices you make every day. It's choices to not be around those things that make you hardened of heart. And that's what we want to talk about this morning is to cause you to make better choices with your day as we live in these latter days, as we live in the last days, as we live in the days that we know that Jesus is coming sooner than you think. He's right around the corner. He's knocking at your door, even the door of your heart because it's so hard. But he's knocking at your door. You could even hear his voice the more and more that you seek to follow after and pursue him with all of your heart. Because you see, that's how we remove the stony heart is if we pursue God with all of our heart. In other words, it's not enough anymore to simply say, Hey God, you know, I got Sunday for you. Let's do this. But if you know that you know that you know you're not tender, if you know that you can't look at dead bodies and be moved by them, or refugees don't bother you, or the fact that out of 7 billion people, it's probable that about 5 billion of them are going to hell, and maybe less than a couple thousand are going to be raptured, maybe 20,000 or less than that, I forget what the number is, 2.5 of maybe 2 billion, figure that one out. If that doesn't bother you and you don't get kind of like, oh my God, then you're not tender hearted. You see, you can get calloused of heart even when you're doing the right thing. I've met so many abortion Nazis that people that are anti-abortion, they are so Nazi, they don't care if the person gets saved. They care that abortion ends. That's social causes, not religious righteousness that God wants for us to have our own personal religion of giving it to Him and having Him to solve it for us. Because, you see, I don't support abortion, but I don't discry the fact that just because it's a legal thing doesn't mean that it has to be removed or, or kept. It's just a choice that you have to make. Don't do it. Period. That's simple. The more you love God, the less you're likely to make choices that are 
against God. In other words, the closer you get to God, the less you're going to be consumed by social causes or social media or things you think you need to get involved in. In other words, even when we have a president like President Donald Trump, who is obviously not qualified what he's doing, obviously the anti-president typology, obviously someone that God is showing us that what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his very soul? If it doesn't break your heart to see the man make bad decisions daily, then we're no longer tender-hearted. We're no longer sensitive to the Spirit of God. And if we're not sensitive to the Spirit of God, then what happens when the Spirit of God leaves? Would we know? When I'm thirsty, I drink water. When I'm dying of thirst, I can't stand but to get water. I have to pursue it. I have to go after it. I need it. It's going to kill me if I don't. And if we don't choose to recognize this cancer we have in these latter days, that we may have left our first love to begin with, but now, after leaving our first love, we've begun to become hardened of heart to it. We no longer even recognize that we have left our first love, Jesus. We've left him somewhere in the dust of our own interpretations, our own manifestations of what we think God would do if Jesus were here today. Oh, God would give you a gun and tell you to protect yourself. God would tell you to go out and protest and get violent and get angry and get mad at these people in the abortion clinics. Planned Parenthood, oh, we'd fight against that because after all, better to fight the cause of Planned Parenthood than somehow to minister the gospel and witness to those that are in Planned Parenthood or the nation itself that has that type of environment that allows for those things to occur. I got news for you. We're not here to save America. We're here to save human beings. The idea of being tender towards God on the things of the Spirit is that we care about people that are perishing, not about social causes. I know that there's 234 abortions committed or whatever. So what? There's more than that. You driving a car. Every day people are dying from vehicular homicide. People making stupid choices with wrong decisions in their vehicle. That is way more death than abortion ever thought of having. And the same thing is true with drug addiction. So what's the matter with us not saving those souls that are involved in driving their cars wrongly? Or people having problems with addiction with drugs and alcohol. Why aren't we so manifesting our righteous rage over those things? And yet we will protest, contest, fight, and argue about abortion, the president, equal rights. But refugees are a little different. You see, refugees can't help but want to be saved. These are people that are wanting to be saved. These are people that are desiring to find something other than what they've had. They don't want war anymore. They don't want your social causes. They don't want your religion. They want to be saved. And they're willing to accept Jesus to get it. Seriously. That's refugees. That's immigrants. That's people coming to America. But what are we doing about it? Oh, well, you know, we want to give them some prosperity, you know, and some great American dream, you know. Baseball, apple pie, you know, and a car in every garage and a chicken in every pot. That's the American way. Never mind God that gave us that way because grace applies, so we'll just go on with our own way of living because we're actually the wealthiest or are we the poorest nation in the world. You see, if you can't, literally, not just figuratively like I'm doing, But if you can't take off your coat and get down and dirty with humanity, then you're no longer tender. If you can't cry and weep with those that are suffering, you're no longer tender. If you don't see the refugee case and you don't mourn over our own sinfulness of trying to keep people away, then you're not tender towards God. You've gone somewhere else. You've no longer loved your first love with that passion that Jesus wanted you to keep getting closer to himself so you'd be as tender as he is. So that you would weep when people were around you weeping. So that you would mourn with those who are mourning. So that you would help those that are helpless. So that you would care for those that are homeless and desiring to come someplace 
to be safe from the devastation and the violence and the war. Any refugee can tell you that violence does not answer violence. It does not accomplish anything. And we've been at war constantly now as quote-unquote supposedly a Christian nation. Even when we were supposed to have been a Christian nation, we were still at war. So are we now moved by the things of the flesh as opposed to being moved by the things of the Spirit? Because if we're moved by the things of the Spirit, then our heart is tender. We're looking for love, to demonstrate that love, to care for people, to bind up their wounds, to reach out to the fatherless, to take care of the widows and orphans, even if they're not American citizens, because they are citizens of heaven. They are called by God to demonstrate for us, to us, that we should be out there ministering to them with our love, with our compassion, with our tenderness, with our gentleness, with our meekness, with our long-suffering, allowing them to come in, and we ministering to them in the name of Jesus, not in the name of America. It's not about your security, it's about your insecurity. Are you so confident of your salvation that you no longer have the tenderness to be what God has said is able to be saved? Because i got news for you. If we don't have love overflowing, we're not going to heaven. We're going to hell. If we don't have, without measure, peace emanating from us, then guess what? You're not going to be standing in the presence of God. If we don't have that joyful lifting up of those even in the midst of an unjoyful time, and I don't mean worship, baby, I mean the regular everyday life, then guess what? You're not going to be worshiping God in heaven. You're going to be standing on the outside going, what happened? Because Jesus said, these are the ones that if as much as you've done it to the least of them, you've done it to me. These are the ones I care about. This is what I'm all about. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever perish shouldn't, that whosoever believe it should not perish but have everlasting life. And if that's not our rallying cry to reach out in every way and every means and every day and everything that we do, then we are not tender towards the things of the Spirit. Because I got news for you. That means you've been on social media too long. That means you've been out in politics too long. You've been at work too long. You've been at your neighbor too long. You've been bombarded with so much that you can't take anymore. You haven't crucified yourself to the world. You become a part of the world. Hardened of heart. You should be a doormat. You should be weak. You should be meek. You should be tender. You should allow them to come after you with a gun and say, hey, I got news for you. You can kill me, but I can still witness to you, and I want to tell you about Jesus. You have to forgive or you won't be forgiven. You have to have mercy or you won't get mercy. These are the things that are just normal for Christianity that we have forsaken. Oh, well, we believe the Bible is the perfect in order to God, so guess what? Read the Bible. Yeah, and become hardened of heart. I know people that can read the Bible 16 times in a row and get nothing out of it. Because it's not about a Bible. It's not about a religion. It's not about a relationship. It's about you getting on with what God has told you to do. And he's wanting you to repent. 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 Because we do have a hardened heart. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Because I got news for you, Christian. The joy isn't out there from Monday and Wednesday on. It's not. People aren't attracted to Christianity. They're rejecting it outright. They don't want what we got. Because we don't care anymore. We care what we care about, and that's what we're doing ourselves. We are naked and poor, even as the scripture declares about the rich church that stands before him, and we need to be tried by fire. You need your works examined. You need to examine yourself. You need to say, hey, do I care? Really? Do I care about the Muslim at all? Do I care or do I just send money? Do I care or am I willing to touch another person in the name of the Lord? In other words, have we allowed ourselves to be so bombarded by the evil that's out there, including Donald Trump, by saying things, lying about things, creating false propaganda, creating all this bombardment of information that is lies on top of lies, that we can no longer see the truth. We can no longer stand in the light. We can no longer examine ourselves and say, yes, 
I'm guilty. I don't have a tender heart. I have a stony heart. Help me today to remove it. Don't let your fruit have a pit in the middle of it. I'm sorry, but peaches have this hard seed inside. And that's the way most of our hearts are today. Oh, sure, we've got a certain amount of fruit going on. Yeah, we got peace up to a point. We got love up to a certain, you know, manifestation of certain people we like. But then guess what? Cut that fruit in half and what's in the middle? We need to be examined now and find out before it's too late. We have not done what Jesus said. See if we are in the faith of what Jesus said is faith. See if we are demonstrating the love of God, the peace of God, the joy of God in every day of our life with everyone that comes our way. Because if you got anyone you can say no to, then you can't say yes to God. Because God so loved the world. We have to now repent, all of us, not just you, not just me, baby, but every one of us, we need to get on our face. Forget about praying for the nation. We need to pray for ourselves, and we need to do it now. We need to go away from our church for a while, like maybe, you know, an afternoon. I know it's hard to do, right? And to get away from the world and just sit down and have a long heart-to-heart -heart with God and say, hey, am I really that way? Am I so bound up with myself that I don't even recognize that I've left my first love, that I don't even know that I've got a stony heart, that I don't even know that these things don't move me anymore. Now they're just like, well, you know, that's the way it is. Deal with it. I got news for you. It's not the way it is. It's the way that hell is becoming and it's coming here on earth. So make clear what you were doing to yourself. Are you allowing yourself to have a stony heart? Or are you choosing now to go somewhere today, while it's called today, to ask God by His Spirit to say, Hey God, I, I, I don't even know if that's true or not, but you know what? Just in case, I want to repent. I want to turn to you with all of my heart. I want to turn to you with all my emotions, all my soul, all my finances, all my beings, everything that I got, including my social media, and whatever it is I'm doing, including my words. And God, I want it to be from you, to you, about you, and with you. Because, God, I'm not going to be satisfied unless you do it to me, no matter what it takes. And if that means I have to be crucified, Lord, then crucify me. But, God, help me to repent today.